All right, sprinters, let's talk metaverse or omniverse, which is maybe a better word for it because it's not meta somewhere. It's here and omni, everything right now connected. So I don't have to stop what I'm doing, go into another place, solution, do something else, and then I can connect it. Everything right here, right now, and it's connected. And um, there are books from the 70s that already uh, depict that because it's technologically possible. And now it's here. It's here. We can have a life here or we can have a life wherever we are and connect it to everything. Plus, there is a tendency for many people right now who feel too many regulations coming to them and they want more freedom and they are just one click away from that freedom. They can bring their whole life into a, a realm, a universe that has less regulations and where they can change um, identity, behaviors, relationships in an easy way. So it's freedom for many people. And that's why it is getting uh, traction, it's getting attention and it will be a big thing for many people. So let's look at what you can do in terms of assets. What place can you look at right now? Let's go to one coin that I am invested in because I think it has traction and uh, also long-term opportunity and this is engine so how will these metaverses be built let's look at the picks and shovels the infrastructure we can look at different levels we can look at the foundational levels what will all these very interactive games need in terms of technology and another one is which games um, will be needed and will which games ecosystems uh, and as you know we always prioritize foundational infrastructure protocol and then two-sided markets and then the application. We usually try to stay away from applications because um, they are much more uh, at risk to be um, substituted over time. And remember, we are so early in NFT, in Metaverse, in Web3, we are so early that nobody knows who will be the winners. Uh, even Bitcoin can be flipped in theory. In theory, you know, it's right now the, the safest bet, but even that. So, of course, everybody else can be flipped. Uh, we don't know if Decentraland will be around in five years. We really don't know. And when we talk NFT and Metaverse, many of them have not even survived two bull cycles. So maybe Engine is the only one who has been around for two bull cycles, which is already a um, sign of strength and of resilience. So Engine is one, and uh, for exactly that reason, it has shown that it can go also through bear markets. And um, it's an interesting play. Let's look at the question, is Engine a buy right now? So let's look at engine we're going to trading view right now look at engine to tether in this case let's look at engine sorry wrong engine full chart here we go it's according to the so let's see volume 30 million the price three and the bollinger bands as you can see it is quite around the moving average right now so it doesn't look overbought or oversold it's quite at fair value there might even be an entry point if you don't have any engine you might consider going for some engine if it fits your overall allocation and if you don't know what a portfolio construction and overall allocation is go to that video where i explained how to make the, your portfolio construction which buckets do you have in which uh, to fill 
So uh, that this bucket would be in the NFT crypto assets bucket. And so if you have designed that you want to have 3% or 5% of your overall portfolio into the crypto asset class NFT or metaverse, then this might be right now something that fits your lane. This is engine and uh, the the indicators it's price it's quite at fair value of course it's better to buy when it comes down to i would say here at the bollinger band 2.6 is a better entry and uh, definitely if it goes up 3.1 3.2 it's overheated um, but if you have zero engine and you have an allocation in your portfolio that says metaverse play and, and you need to fill that in your rebalancing system then this might be an opportunity right here now talking engine there is a project in the engine ecosystem called efinity that is also worth watching and let me know if you want a deep analysis of engine uh, when I say deep analysis, we do the whole research cycle, 10 steps of due diligence that we do. And I'm happy to do it for you if you're considering this and don't know how to do due diligence. I'm happy to show you how to do it and do it live with you. So Affinity says it's the next generation blockchain for NFTs. And um, it looks good uh, in terms of potential and... Um, I had a quick look at the fundamentals. They also look good, but let's go a bit deeper. How does Infinity look like right now? So Bollinger Band extremely widened and we have here quite the fair value line. It's also in the middle, so so. And um, this is definitely worth checking a, because it's so early and uh, it is definitely something that I can do an analysis about if you want. Let's uh, for now have it on the list of things that are interesting to watch and that could be part of your metaverse or NFT bucket or omniverse bucket like my bucket is called omniverse bucket another project which is interesting is ovr and ovr is right now paying people to go out there and take pictures and send pictures in of things like you know the acropolis the the cathedrals of this world the the, the beautiful locations, the cities, the streets. Basically what Google Maps did, uh, but in a decentralized way. And that, as you know, is the future in this. What we are bullish about, decentralization is what this whole uh, revolution of the blockchain technology is all about. And what they're doing right now, they pay you if you go and make this picture you send this picture in and they are building this huge database and of course in the future people will uh, need all these elements right and then you have it there already and then it can become a two-sided marketplace because you can have it like the central end where companies want to have some of that uh, real estate because they want to do events in there or ads and so you can imagine this become uh, part of an ecosystem play that is really really interesting if you want to do your due diligence this is the website that you can go and have a look at and also if you want me to do a deep due diligence I'm happy to do it it is on my radar any way to do it because it might also become part of my uh, bucket. And I'm, we're talking here 0.2% of uh, the, the bucket that I'm, I'm considering adding to. Let's, let's look at OVR. 
how it's doing today. Uh, we are directed overboard. So as you can see here, Bollinger Band, absolute top late. It's late, people. Uh, so it's not the right moment, but it's, it's not appropriate to buy it anyways because we didn't do a proper due diligence yet. And we never buy without going through the 10 steps checklist. And if you don't know what the 10 steps are, go and watch that video where I share the 10 steps with you. So Bollinger Band, absolutely top. And we don't buy at the top, we only buy down here uh, or definitely below the moving average line or fair value line. We never buy up there. You can only go down from there. There are basically you can think like in waves of the ocean and all the waves come down eventually. That's how nature goes and that's how the market also goes always in S curves. And from OVR, which is a very interesting project, to MetaHero, where I had the opportunity to meet the team and, and talk to them about it. It's an interesting play. One of the use cases might be the fact that people in the NFT, they want to have their selves represented, right? So if you are in the metaverse, in the omniverse, you want to see yourself, right? Let's say people hate shopping, um, and but they want to shop. Some might want to have their avatar, uh, like exactly how they are out there and, um, and say, let me see, I don't want to go to a shop and try clothes on because I hate it. Let me try my clothes on online, on my phone. I want to see how this fits me and I want to buy exactly that without going anywhere. And I want it um, shipped home. So there are some real interesting use cases here that I see possible with this project. I did not do a due diligence yet. So um, we would have to do a proper due diligence first before considering going into here. But it's interesting what they're doing. The next um, red flag for me is the question about the data. How will they use the data? Um, they are, I think, also paying people uh, to, to make these pictures. So who is owning the data? Uh, is something to watch definitely because um, I think I want only to invest in things where the the freedom to own the data is on the user side. This is what the whole, the whole blockchain is all about. So this is one thing to check first, who owns the data and um, definitely an interesting project to watch. Let's see Meta Hero. How how's it doing? This is from Qcoin. Well, yeah, this if it passes the due diligence and all these questions that we just discussed, then and only if then this would be a good entry point because it's far below its moving average and fair value line. So that might be an interesting point actually to enter. But it, there is no reason to enter something before you have done a proper due diligence. We don't allow that. <laughs> and so these are some ideas. Engine, Affinity, OVR, MetaHero. These are some plays that are less spoken about than the Decentraland and sand sandboxes uh, of the world. So the sandbox and Decentraland mana are definitely the ones that are popping up everywhere because they're super interesting and they have pumped a lot. And these are maybe some smaller plays that are worth analyzing, watching, 
and um, at some point maybe adding. If you want me to do it proper due diligence, let me know. I'm happy to do it. Keep rolling. <laughs>